Father, you're the King of Kings. Father, you're holy, you're righteous. Lord, you're our Redeemer. You're the Lion and you're the Lamb. And Jesus, because we've been redeemed, because we can walk in freedom, we stand today on this Resurrection Sunday and we say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and who is and who is to come. And so Jesus, we worship you today. We praise you today. We lift you high, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. That we don't have to perform. We thank you, Jesus. Lord, that we don't have to try to be better. We thank you, Jesus. That you had a remedy. And the remedy was the cross. Because the cross equals love. And so Jesus, today, would you be glorified? Would you be lifted high in your precious and holy name? Amen. You may be seated this morning. Can I ask you the question this morning, how can one begin to understand a love like Jesus? And can I tell you this morning that a cross was his way for us to understand a love that's incomprehensible. You see, at the cross, he was taking our place. Where he allowed the guilty to walk free and where the innocent was slain. You see, at the cross, he was taking our curse because in the beginning in Genesis, when sin entered the world by choice, the ground was cursed, but the death of Jesus on the cross, he was actually taking the curse upon his shoulders. You see, at the cross, he was clothing us. It actually says in Isaiah 61, 10, that I will rejoice in the Lord for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and covered me with the robe of righteousness. You see, at the cross, the soldiers began to gamble for his clothes, but they didn't realize that they didn't need to gamble for Jesus' clothes because he was actually going to clothe us with salvation and righteousness. You see, at the cross, Jesus was tearing heaven open for you and me. It was all made possible by that selfless act by Jesus resisting the earthly desire to avoid the pain and torture of his bodily death and instead accepting the cup that God had placed before him for the salvation of the world. To exhibit to you and I on this Easter Sunday, this selfless act of love. It was the instrument of Christ suffering and death and it's also the instrument of our salvation. You see, God didn't just promise love, He proved love. Hear me this morning, God didn't just declare a promise of love, He actually proved love through the cross. In John 15, 13, it says, greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. It tells us clearly what the pinnacle of love is, the best kind of love that you could ever possibly offer someone is actually laying down your life for your friends. And you know, when I was thinking about this, I was reminded that he willingly laid down his life in the middle, in the middle of two criminals, just maybe so that the both of them could actually see and experience love. I don't know what your middle is this morning, but can I tell you that Jesus is still laying down his life so that you can see love in your middle. Love from all directions. A love that you and I in humanly fashion have never experienced. 
It's absolutely incredible that Jesus follows this statement with what He says next. And Jesus, after having given us this model of love, goes on to say that He no longer calls us servants, but He actually calls us friends. Romans 5, 8 tells us that while we were yet sinners, while we were still rejecting God, while we still didn't even have God on our mind, that He died for us. He calls us humanity oppressed by sin friends. He actually died to save His friends. And in dying on the cross for all sinful, broken humanity, He showed the greatest possible love, a love that doesn't keep records, a love that knew that some would still reject Him, but He still followed through. And I was asking myself the question this week, why would He do such a thing? And I believe the answer is found this morning in Ephesians 3, 17 through 18. It says, so that Christ may dwell, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith in us being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and how high and how deep is the love of God. And to know this kind of love that surpasses all knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. He wanted us to know, and mostly importantly this morning, to experience the four dimensions of love. The first is the length. You see where heaven comes down to invade earth, from eternity to eternity, from everlasting to everlasting, from heaven to hell. He went all out. He spared nothing. He provided no cheap sacrifice. His love was long enough to pluck his son, to reveal his love to poor lost man like me and you. His love is long enough this morning on this Easter Sunday to reach you. No matter how far away that you've wandered, God's love is long enough in sacrifice and long enough in outreach to pull you back. Hear me this morning. His love is long enough in sacrifice and love enough in outreach, no matter where you find yourself this morning, to actually pull you back. The length of your separation, His love is greater still. You see, not only was His love long, but it is also wide. There is actually a width to his love. It was so wide that Jesus hung on that cross and he stretched out his arms from the east to the west to prove to us this morning that his love is wide for you. You friend, you ma'am, you sir, you criminal, you orphan. It's as broad as humanity. It's unlimited and it's actually universal. It's not restricted by geography or sex or color or rank or position or boundaries or frontiers or barriers or spite fences or restrictions of time or space. It extends over and beyond every human need. It envelops sorrow. It envelops loneliness. It develops poverty, it develops disappointment and tragedy and sin of every kind. God's love is as broad as human need, is as boundless as space and wide as the ocean and limitless as the sky. The width of that gap, whatever that gap is for you, His love is greater still. Not only is His love long and not only is it wide, but it's also high this morning. There's a height to his love, to the very throne of God. His love reaches to the depths to carry us into the heights. He will lift you this morning above the quicksand of sin and the fogs of life, the trials of living, the sorrows of earth, up to the heights of his holiness and godliness. 
where me and you can live above sin, above shame, above guilt, above pain. I believe that's where some of us are positioned this morning. We're actually living in the pain. We're actually living in the sin. We're actually living in the shame. But can I tell you this morning that the height of the heavens, His love is greater still. His love takes you higher than your circumstances. It gives you a higher perspective this morning. But there's also a fourth dimension of His love, and that's the depth of His love the greatness of what it actually cost him. His love reaches to the brink of hell. It's deep enough this morning to snatch you out of that dark place of addiction and that dark place of divorce and that dark place of pain and that dark place of heartache. And God's love can penetrate your heart deep enough to remove the stain and the blackness of sin. The depth of your pain, his love is greater still. This kind of love in all of its dimensions, the height, the length, the width, the depth, so deeply intimate and far reaching is his love, enduring and beyond measurement. And why you might ask? So that Christ may dwell so that Christ may dwell. That word dwelling doesn't mean just a, just a glance or it doesn't mean just a stop or a momentary moment. That word dwell actually means to live in. It actually means to be fully present so that Christ may dwell and that you and I on this Easter Sunday would grasp this kind of love and that we may know the love of the Savior and then for you and I to be filled. You see, Jesus knew that his love would be the marker of his life and of our lives. Jesus' love on the cross would be the marker of his life and then our life as Jesus' followers. Love knows no limit to its endurance, no end to its trust, no fading of its hope. It can outlast anything. It is in fact the one thing that still stands when all else has fallen. The cross really does equal love.